time machine travelers. I'm Miss Ziegler, the time machine teacher, and today I'm taking you on the first episode of Destination American History. Behind me is the John Rankin House. From 1822 to 1865, Reverend John Rankin and his wife and 13 children helped thousands of slaves escape via the Underground Railroad, hiding them in their house and wherever they could in this area right back behind me. We're gonna go check it out and I want you to see why he chose this specific spot for his service on the Underground Railroad. Here's a little bit about John Rankin and his family. He first lived in Tennessee and Kentucky. However, his anti-slavery preaching wasn't very popular down there, as you can imagine. And that is why he came to Ripley, Ohio. He first lived down the hill in town. After some time living there, though, he felt that the city was not the best place to raise his children, so he purchased the land on top of the hill. From this vantage point, he could see for miles up and down the Ohio River, which is a super important vantage point because of his work with the Underground Railroad. Here's the view from the top of the hill all the way across. You can see Kentucky. There's the Ohio River. This is where the runaway slaves would have come across. So from the top of this hill, from this vantage point, as he burned a light in the window to let slaves know that it was okay to cross, it could be seen for several, several miles. And here's the front of the house. This is where he would have placed a light in the window to let runaway slaves know that it was safe for them to come across the river. Behind me you see the Ohio River where many slaves crossed in the night to their freedom. Oftentimes they would come during the winter so that they could cross on ice and it would be easier. There's a story that Harriet Beecher Stowe heard from one of John Rankin's sons that eventually becomes the character in her book named Eliza. In her book Uncle Tom's Cabin, which completely rocked the United States at the time because of course it angered slave owners and they said that it was just outrageous what she was saying, she used the story of a slave that crossed here on ice, different pieces of ice because the ice had been melting, and she crossed with her baby, falling in the river twice and keeping her baby above water. There was a slave catcher on the edge that was watching her come across, and as she came up to the bank, he held out his hand to allow this tired, exhausted, freezing woman onto the banks of the river. At that point, he had some compassion because he had seen her fall twice and he knew that she was trying to save her baby, and so instead of turning her in, as any slave catcher probably would have, in order to receive the bounty money, he pointed to the house on the top of the hill and told her that that's where she needed to go for safety. This story makes it to Harriet Beecher Stowe and it eventually becomes the character in her book named Eliza. When the Fugitive Slave Act passes in 1850, it of course becomes even more dangerous for Underground Railroad conductors to help runaway slaves. At that time, slave catchers also came into Ripley to try to find slaves that were crossing the river. And so it was a very, very dangerous position that John Rankin was in. However, he felt that it was worth the risk to help the slaves. Another interesting thing about the Ohio River is that at the time of the Rankins, it wasn't quite as wide as what it is now. And so there were some sections that could be crossed by boat. Many runaway slaves owed their freedom to John Rankin and his family. John Parker, who is a former slave and whose home we are going to check out here in just a minute, wrote of John Rankin. And he said, John Rankin and his sons beat back their assailant and held its threshold unsullied. A lighted candle stood as a beacon which could be seen from across the river and like the North Star was the guide to the fleeing slave. Especially once the Fugitive Slave Act came into play, it became riskier and riskier for John Rankin to do what he did, but he didn't stop. He and his family continued to help slaves earn their freedom and move on up the Underground Railroad network through Ohio and eventually to Canada if they could make it that far. So right here, I'm standing on history. These were called the 100 Steps to Freedom. These stone steps went all the way down into town from the front door of the Rankin House. 
Now they're covered up with these wood steps, but there was a landslide and they have them closed right now until they get fixed. So that's how the slaves would have made it up from the banks of the Ohio River into the house. There were no secret hiding spots inside the Rankin house because for the most part, he had several sons that could protect the house. And so if they did need to hide the slaves, they had a barn out back with a hidden floor where the slaves would hide for a little while. But oftentimes the slaves would come at night and they were moved that same night. So they usually didn't spend the night here just because of slave catchers being in the area and the dangers of helping runaway slaves because of the Fugitive Slave Act. The Rankins could have been fined or sent to jail had they been caught. From inside the Rankin house, John Rankin would write letters to his brother about how owning slaves was wrong because he had heard that his brother purchased slaves. Because of his persuasive letters, his brother ends up freeing the slaves and moving to Ripley to help in the runaway slave effort. Once slaves came to the Rankin house, they were, like I said, moved at night to the Red Oak Presbyterian Church, which was about five miles from here. They were usually moved on foot or by horseback by the sons of the Rankin family who would take turns doing so. The girls in the Rankin family were in charge of dressing and feeding the slaves. They often tried to find clothes for the slaves in order so that they could blend in more as free blacks instead of tattered clothes that runaways would have worn. Their goal was then to move through the routes of the Underground Railroad and make it to Canada. Because the Rankins were breaking the law, they didn't really keep good records of how many slaves passed through here. It's said that around 2,000 slaves were assisted with the help of the Rankins through this stop on the Underground Railroad. John Rankin and his family were not the only abolitionists that were working here. There were a whole bunch down in Ripley who were also helping out. So let's go check out Front Street and a little bit more about the other abolitionists that helped the Rankins in their effort to help the slaves. Is the John Parker house. John Parker was a former slave who bought his freedom actually because as a teenager he learned the skilled trade of being a foundry worker and so he was able to work enough to save his earnings and buy his freedom eventually. He was sold into slavery at the age of eight. He purchased his freedom in 1845 and leaves Mobile, Alabama and ends up in Cincinnati in 1848. He was told of two girls that lived in Kentucky who wanted their freedom. And so he decided to go to Kentucky and rescue these two girls and he brought them to Ripley, Ohio. This is where he begins to first understand and see the workings of the Underground Railroad and decides he wants to help. He later will marry Miranda Bolden, buys the property that you see behind me and settles in Ripley, Ohio. So that's when he becomes an active conductor on the Underground Railroad. And from time to time when a runaway slave couldn't make it all the way up the hill to John Rankin's house, as you can see, it's pretty far up there, then he would assist the slaves here at the banks of the river. He was also an extractor, which meant that he would go into Kentucky to bring slaves across the river. If caught, he could have been sold back into slavery or hung for the things that he was doing. However, he was never caught and he never lost a fugitive. All along Front Street, you can see houses of abolitionists that worked in the movement and helped as conductors of the Underground Railroad. It's an amazing part of history that, that even though the evils of slavery were happening right across the river, there were many people here helping to stop it. This is the Signal House. Legend has it that there was a skylight in the attic of this house where the owners would place a lantern in order to signal Reverend John Rankin that it was safe for the slaves to cross and that there weren't any slave catchers in the area. And then he would know that he could put the signal in his window. Now it is a bed and breakfast, so if you ever visit Ripley, Ohio, you'll have to check it out.
Before I leave, I'm gonna check out the soda shop right down the street because it looked like they might have some ice cream and it is a hot day here in Ohio. steps came down off of 4th Street into Ripley, Ohio from John Rankin's house. It's really a bummer that we can't climb them today. When I first got to the Ripley house, I was talking to the gentlemen that work inside of the little guest area. I made the comment about how I felt that Ripley, Ohio was still somewhat, you know, had, had still somewhat preserved the past. Almost as though it was still like it would have been during the Civil War because of their preservation of history here. And he said that Mark Twain is quoted to have said, When the end of the world comes, I want to be in Cincinnati because it's always 20 years behind the times. Cincinnati is about an hour away from Ripley, but it also still feels very reminiscent of the past. And it was a big part of the Underground Railroad as it's very close to Kentucky. He was saying that, you know, Mark Twain was right about the fact that Cincinnati is behind the times as well as Ripley, Ohio. So definitely put this place on your list as a place to visit. It has an awesome historical feel. And for time travelers, I know we love places like that. There are several more places here in Ripley, Ohio that I could take you to. It's just amazing how many historical sites are designated here. It's really, really awesome to just walk around and see all these plaques everywhere. Right behind me is a monument dedicated to the brave men and women who helped fight slavery. Thank you so much for watching the first episode of Destination American History. Many more to come. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next episode of Destination American History.